Neutrinos are one of the most elusive and confusing types of particles, and they may have just got more confusing. Evidence is mounting that there might be new types of neutrinos that we don't know about, and they may even be a form of dark matter. To try and answer these questions, scientists have built detectors all around the world, in labs, inside mountains, deep underground in old mines, and even beneath the ice in Antarctica. These grand structures sit poised and ready, constantly searching for one goal, to detect neutrinos. But neutrinos are hard to detect, and this leaves these experiments wanting for more. Surprisingly, some of these experiments got just that, more neutrinos. This sparked a furious debate and a fevered search for the reason behind this. So, let's discuss it. In the 1930s, a puzzle arose. Energy conservation seemed to be broken for beta decay. There was missing energy from the output particles. Wolfgang Pauli proposed a new type of particle that would have a neutral charge and could account for this missing energy. He proposed this in a letter to a conference that he couldn't attend, in which he states, So far, I do not dare to publish anything about this idea, and trustfully turn first to you, with the question of how likely it is to find experimental evidence for such neutrons. I admit that my remedy may seem almost improbable. He called this a neutron, but after the particle we now call a neutron was discovered, this name changed to a neutrino. Now, neutrinos are a different type of particle that has no charge, is massless or has very small mass, and only interacts with other matter through the weak force. Currently, we know there are three types of neutrinos that are linked to the three leptons. So, an electron neutrino, a muon neutrino, and a tau neutrino. And we know this because these neutrinos oscillate between these states or flavors over time. This is a very unusual quality. An electron never turns into a muon, but an electron neutrino does turn into a muon neutrino and a tau neutrino as they all oscillate between each other. We know this because we can measure this oscillation. But how can you even measure a neutrino? We can't directly measure neutrinos, they don't interact in a way that is conducive to direct detection. They only interact via the weak force. Instead of measuring neutrinos, we try to measure the result of a neutrino collision with atoms. If a neutrino hits the atom with enough energy, it will break the atom apart, generating a spray of different particles. Similar to particle detectors in large particle colliders like the LHC, the direction and the energy of these particles are measured. Through these measurements, we can determine what neutrino was involved in the collision, as each neutrino generates a different particle pattern. In order to generate a large number of detection events, many detectors are sealed in a large room that is then filled with oil, or more recently, liquid argon. The oil or argon has a large density, which acts to interact with as many neutrinos as possible, while absorbing as little of the resulting particle shower as possible. With these detectors, we can measure the type of neutrinos that is coming from some source. Thus, we can measure the amount of oscillations between the different neutrino flavors. We do this by measuring the number of neutrinos of a certain type and comparing this with the expected number from a known source. If the known source should only produce muon neutrinos, the detector will also detect electron and tau neutrinos. Thus, we can see that the muon neutrino transforms into the other flavors. One such experiment called Miniboon noticed an anomaly in 2010. This experiment was situated in the line of a source of muon neutrinos. The problem was, it detected more electron neutrinos than predicted. One explanation for this was the existence of a fourth flavor of neutrino, the so-called sterile neutrino. This neutrino would be an additional oscillation state, but would not interact via the weak force making it a type of dark matter. Including this additional neutrino could explain the excess in electron neutrinos detected. However, other experiments from other detectors disagreed with this result, leading to a slew of experiments and theories being performed to explain these differences. Fast forward to 2021 and we may finally have our answer. The successor to Miniboon, Microboon, has investigated this problem. This involved a major upgrade in equipment, including upgrading to a liquid argon environment. A lead scientist in the project said this, the mini Boone experiment in early 2010 showed an anomaly one could possibly explain with the existence of a sterile neutrino. With the advance in technology and detail offered by the liquid argon projection chambers, 
microburn was able to disfavor this interpretation of the mini burn low energy excess as due to sterile neutrinos. So it looks like the simplest extension of our understanding of neutrinos may be off the cards. But there are more anomalies in experiments out there. And with one additional neutrino off the cards, we have to look at higher order answers. For this, we should look at what's worked in the past. The universe loves symmetries. And a lot that we know about particle physics comes from using these symmetries together with group theory. Well, group theory quickly leads to groups of three particles. We have three leptons. We have three groups of quarks. We have three forces, the strong electromagnetism and the weak force. And the weak force is mediated with three particles. So if there's a new set of neutrinos that are dark matter, the next candidate is a group of three. Maybe this is just an equivalent form of the current neutrinos, just without the weak interaction. Or maybe the dark matter neutrinos are very heavy and could account for a large amount of the dark matter in the universe. We simply just don't know. In the end, more experiments will be performed in order to answer many of these questions, and hopefully we will find out answers. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you next time.